everybody, welcome to another episode of Wigging Out with Bobby Z. It's a Wiggy Review Wednesday and it's a tutorial today, so yay! I know you guys are excited. Um, I just woke up and I'm not fully caffeinated yet. This is only number two. I usually have like 12. So, give me a second. And now there's two reasons why I haven't really been doing tutorials lately. Number one is that there's only so many things that I'm willing to show you guys for free. So certain roller sets, certain comb outs, certain styling techniques, I don't want to give away that for free. Like if you want to take a class with me, if you want to do a Skype lesson, if you want to come to New York and hang out in my apartment and comb hair and, you know, do all of that fun stuff, that's great. But at this point, I just, it's, I don't want to give everything away for free. I want to give you guys the basics so you guys can learn and practice on your own. I'm giving you guys what I got when I started doing wigs was I got roller sets, I got blocking. I got all of that. In terms of styling and situating the hair and figuring out how all of that stuff goes together, it's just how I do it. I, my techniques might not work for you and vice versa. Two is that I am so busy these days with work and commissions and stuff like that, that I really don't have time to do a wig just for a tutorial. In the past, I would. Like in the past, I would roller set and brush something out just for a tutorial. But now that I'm so busy, there's just no time. So when I do a tutorial now, it's usually something that's either commissioned or something that's for me or for a friend of mine. And that was first things first. So today's tutorial is going to be kind of hard to explain. I know I did a, a couple wig stacking videos in the past about how to put them on on your head stacked, how to pin them together stacked. Now this is sort of like a wig stack, but not. Um, basically what I'm going to show you guys today is how to take two wigs and cut one apart and sew it onto another one. The pros and cons of doing this, like the pro is, is that it's one solid wig and it has all the hair in it, but that's also a con is that it's one solid wig and has the hair in it. For stuff that's really big and really full and really thick, I personally like to do several wigs or pieces put together so that when and if you ever have to maintain that thing, like tear it apart and reset it, you can just tear the pieces apart, wash it, steam it out, reset it, put it back together. Versus if you have one wig with like 18 packs of hair into it, you're never really going to be able to maintain that back to where it was because there's so much hair in it. It's it's just, it's a hassle. So it's going to be more than like two packs of hair. I just usually will just do a stack because it's so much easier later down the line to maintain it and to make it look gorgeous and brand new and pretty again than to have something that's ridiculously full and crazy. So that being said, this is going to be a Dolly Parton wig for a client of mine, uh, Zandalee Clark. She lives in Australia. So hey girl, you're going to tutorial. Yay! She custom ordered a Dolly Parton 1990s wig from me. I'm going to show you the same exact wig twice. You can do this with two wigs that are the same in different colors. You can do this with two wigs that are completely different. It all depends on what you have lying around. I kind of like the technique I showed you guys where you take the short little boy wig and you sew all the hair onto it, like that. It's kind of the same technique and the idea behind that with this. So if you do blonde onto a dark wig and you tease it down really good, it'll look like roots. Um, if you do two long wigs, one with layers and one not with layers, you put them together, it'll kind of look like an ombre color. So it's really, it's really easy to mix and match wigs together once you kind of look at them and you figure out, okay, well, I can put that one with this one and then it'll make a really cool color, or I could cut the top out of that one, the back out of this one, and the sides out of this one and sew it together. You don't have to sew together two. You can sew together three, four, five pieces of different ones. You could sew it together and add a different piece of track if you want to. It's all about customization and figuring out what you want and what works for you and how to get there. You will need scissors, of course. You need a wig brush. You'll need a tail comb and a pit comb just to kind of get hair out of the way and kind of lift it, you know, so you can sew around it. You're also going to need thread to match. I'm not sure which color is going to match these wigs, so I got my, oops, and I have two now. Um, small sewing pins. You're also going to need some larger pins to put your wig on the head. Going to need a head, of course. This is a 22 and a half. This is a long neck. Usual. I'm using the tripod. This is Dolly Parton in a bag, people. I mean, come on. Like, this is exactly what she looks like and I saw this wig and I was like this is exactly what I want and need in my life right now. So this wig, because everyone's going to ask me, this wig is by Sheba VIP Collection. 
The style is ruby and the color is 613. This is the Dolly Parton wig and I have dose. If you have a skin top wig, you can cut apart a skin top and sew it onto another skin top, but unless you're gonna tease that wig down really, really good, it makes the top of it super, super bulky and awkward looking, so be forewarned. So as you can see, I already have her blocked, so I'm just gonna give her a quick little brush, just because she still has that crispy curly look from the bag, and I don't want that. I'm just gonna go through, and I'm gonna section and clip her up, just to make it a little easier for me to sew into her later. Okay, so as you can see, I sectioned out the top, the middle, and then the bottom section, and then I left about four wefts or so along the bottom here, and that's where I'm gonna start sewing. Also, now that you have it clipped up, what you wanna do is, since I'm sewing all this hair into it, I don't want my cap to shrink. I like to make sure my elastic tabs are out, so I usually will clip those together along the front of the block just so I know that they're out of the way so I'm not sewing to them or sewing them down into the wig because then they won't work. This and I pull I pull the foundation of the wig forward like that so it kind of makes like an L shape and what that's doing is that's just stretching out this middle portion of the, you can see how far even though this is a 23, 22 and a half block See how much stretch I still have in this wig. Machine made wigs stretch a lot, people. It's just a matter of knowing how to do it. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your wig and you wanna take your tabs, which are these little elastic guys in the back with the little hooks. You wanna take both of those and you wanna snip them out first thing because you're not gonna use them. And I personally snip them out of wigs in an instance like this and then I save them in case I ever have to sew them back into a wig later, or if I'm ever making a wig from scratch, I have the little tabs. Usually what I do is I start in the bottom and I cut off this whole tab right here. And I cut the tag out usually because the wig doesn't need two tags. Um, and then I section off the whole bottom part to the same place where this is. And I cut this off and I sew it right there. Then next, I usually go up about two or three wefts at a time, sometimes four, depending on how thick the wig is. You can go through and cut it weft by weft and sew it weft by weft, but I've done that and I've also done this technique and I find that you can't tell the difference, so it kind of just wastes time to do them individually. So I usually just go through and I cut two or three, sometimes four, wefts across. I cut the ribbons so they come off in one big piece. I then, I then sew that down as a unit in between the weft. Snip right here, which is where the, um, the foundation elastic on the side joined the back tab. I'm gonna do the same thing here on this side, right here. These scissors are really crappy. I couldn't find my good sharp ones. Um, so then now you'll see that that is pretty much free hanging and then this is not connected anymore at all. So then you just wanna go through and you wanna cut the little ribbon that holds the wefts in place. So now it's free. Like I always end up doing these type of tutorials on blonde wigs and I am so sorry you guys. You section out the bottom portion right here which is identical to the section I just cut out of the wig. This piece is gonna sit right on top just like that. So let me put this here and I'm gonna take a little pin and I'm gonna pin it down so now I have my needle threaded and now I can take my clippy out just because the hair's out of the way and I have it clipped up already. So now I'm just going to take this needle and I, I like to start kind of underneath right here just so that that corner can get sewn down very, very, very well. And I'm just going to go in with a blanket stitch. So basically what a blanket stitch is, I've had people ask me recently about what stitch I use. So basically what it is, is I hold the thread with one hand here, and then I put the needle through where I'm sewing. If I could, it's really thick right here. That's what she said. And what I do is, you can see, this is the needle, and this is the loop of thread. So I pull the needle through that loop of thread, and it ties down into a knot. This is pretty much the same knot, I, am, I believe, that people use when they sew in a weave, I think. I'm not entirely sure, 
I would think that people would use a blanket stitch just because it's, you know, you tie it off every time, but, you know, I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't watch many weave videos because I just, I cringe. So, you just want to do like five or six stitches on the side where you're starting just to make sure that you're nice and tight. And it's not going to come loose. And you always want to tack the edges down. If the edges aren't tacked down, you will run into problems later. I also like to take the pins out as I'm sewing just to make it a little easier for me later. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the foundation of the base of the wig. And I'm going to go through this piece here with my needle. And I like to just go from the back just because it makes it a little easier. And I usually do, in the bottom portion, I like to do two, I like to do two stitches, like every half inch, I just like to do it twice. Um, so you just keep doing that with the blanket stitch. So you'll see here, these are two tracks, but this is the last band. They're not sewn to this last band, they're sewn here. So what you want to do is, um, I like to just sew in the middle of those, because then it gives that top one extra volume. I like to just clip heavily up out of the way just so that I'm not risking getting other pieces of hair in it. Now that I did three tracks on that wig, I'm going to take three tracks on this wig, which is basically going to be right here where that same little split happens that's on here. Once you start to get in the actual wig of it, it gets so much easier to sew because you can just sew the wefts together and sew the ribbons together and it just it lines up and it just makes it very easy. It's like a puzzle. You just take the ribbon to ribbon like this and then you sew it in like that. If your wig is a different brand or the, it's two different style wigs, they might not line up perfectly, but it's kind of like a gauge as you go. You can kind of follow along. As you guys can see here, I decided to be nice and speed this up for you. I'm just continuing to sew with the blanket stitch. And then I let another section down and I cut the same three weft piece from the top wig. And then I sew it into place again with the blanket stitch. As you guys can see, I'm sewing through all layers of wefting and ribbon to get it anchored very tightly. You guys can see here I moved into the side tab portion of the wig, so I figured I would stop and explain something. In the same exact place on the wig here. So once I get to this portion of the wig, I usually like to do every two wefts. And then you need to use like really heavy duty scissors usually because there's what's called a stay in there and what that is is that's just a piece of metal that holds the ear tab portion of your wig down so usually once you cut it you can pull it out of the rest of it like this pull the stay out like that. and you just want to cut along the ribbons again just like before You want to get in there and you want to kind of make sure you get all the hair split in between so you're not cutting off any of the hair. Chop it like that, pull it apart. You also want to go in again with the pliers and pull the stay out. Ta-da, stay, gone. Looks like this, so I have my two ear tabs on either side and I have all of the little wefting in the middle. So then you're gonna line that up. I like to sew on top so that the weft kind of falls in the middle. So you're, you're almost sewing in between the wefts instead of on top of them so that you can have flatness back here but you still get all the density of all the hair. My assistant, Mr. Josh, everybody. Hi. He says hi. <laughs> and okay, start to stitch down. And I like to kind of stitch on the top, so I'm as you can see, when the knot tightens, it's not tightening around any hair, it's tightening up there at the top because I don't want to lose any density in the front hairline with a stitch, like catching any of it, because I want the most density in the front since this isn't a lace front and I have to style it forward. So I'm just stitching along the top portion here. 
and then I go underneath and I do a couple stitches stitching down the bottom portion and I try my best not to catch any hair in my stitches just kind of make it nice and tight so that that bottom flap isn't going to go anywhere and then go back over here and stitch start stitching it down to the corner of start stitching it right here and then go back up Ooh, as I hit my computer back up to the top do another stitch there and that's just to make sure that that, that that's it's on there really good and that's definitely enough to hold it so here you can see I've just decided to be nice and speed this up for you guys again I'm continuing to sew with the blanket stitch the two top weftings on top of the two weftings from the base wig remembering to sew in between I then take another two sec two weftings down and I cut another two weftings from the top wig and stitch those down as well as you can see I am rapidly moving up the top of the wig going two by two makes it a lot quicker than going individually but if you want to do individually that's fine and then I'm continuing to cut I'm getting closer to the top portion where the weftings run parallel to the front hairline versus T to the section as we called it in school and then right here is the last piece. So here as you can see I've reached the top part of the wig. I just have this part sectioned out. This is both wigs sewn together and as you can see this is a lot of her. It's a lot of body and it's a lot of volume and it's just gonna get bigger when I put the top in. So you can see here this is the top portion of the wig and this is all wefted and the wefting goes this way underneath and then in the front it goes that way. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start cutting it apart and I'm going to do the same thing as before. Do like every two wefts through here and then in the top I think I'm going to do like every four or three and then I'm going to cut the front bit off here and sew it right on the front. So here we go. As you guys can see, I am continuing to go up the back of the wig every two sections. I'm cutting the complementary piece from the top section of the top wig to coincide with where I'm sewing it. Again, going every two weftings through here. I'm using a lot of stitches up here just because I know this is where I'm going to tease the most. So I need to make sure that it is secure. Again, another two pieces, another two pieces. And then what I like to do is I like to flip it around towards the front. And I like to start in the front section and I like to sew this piece in actually backwards so that instead of going back off of the face, it is going forward onto the face. And then this next one, I like to do the same going forward. And then the piece after this, I like to have going backwards off the face just so that I can make sure that it is going to lay and split correctly in the final style. Now everything behind this piece I am sewing back as well so that it all blends off the face. So here she, here she is all done. As you can see I got my nice little 80s dolly bangs up here and um, it is a little frizzy right now but I'm gonna steam it out and roll it under to give it a bevel. So it's fine that it's a little frizzy right now and I'm gonna leave the bangs as they are because that is just perfect for 80s dolly and they will tease up into like a big glorious bouffant of magicalness. That's her, she's really big and full and that's the result. So yeah. So that was how you cut apart and sew together two or more wigs. Like I said, you can take two, three, four wigs and put them together. You can cut different parts from different wigs to add different color panels. Possibilities are endless. If you can think of it, you can do it. So yeah, I hope you guys like this tutorial and I hope you guys will go out there and experiment with cutting apart and sewing together your own little Frankenstein wig, you know, kind of put some bolts in your neck, you'll be good to go. 
So <laughs> thank you guys again for watching. Check out all my fun social media stuff down in the box. Uh, Facebook.com slash bobbypins. Instagram, Tumblr, and Twitter are wigging out BZ. Same as on here. My email is info at bobbypins.com. My website, of course, is bobbypins.com where you can check out all my fun deluxe lace front wigs and some of my favorite wig making supplies. I have new stuff coming in pretty much every other week right now. So keep your eyes peeled, bookmark that page, check it often. New stuff's coming in all the time. And until then, um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you on Friday for a new fun Friday video. Thanks, guys.